Alright, so today, today we're going to do section 11.2, which is an next one. Uh, yesterday we did the area formula for squares, rectangles, parallelograms, and uh, triangles. Today we're going to finish up the rest of the quadrilateral. So trapezoids, rhombuses, or rhombi, and kites. Okay. Trapezoids, rhombuses, or rhombi, and kites. Um, should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you where these formulas come from using a short little proof. We're not going to do it in two column proof, but I'll just show you where, why, why we know what it is. I think you'll like it. Um, after this section, we do have a quiz coming on 10.1 and 10.2. 11.1 or 11.2. 11.1, thank you, and 11.2. Um, we can talk about that at the end of class. All right. Oh, thank you. So the three shapes we need to talk about today. Trapezoid, kite, rhombus. The formula for the trapezoid, does anybody know it? Uh, I think base one times base two, uh, over two, five, five. Uh, not base one times base two, but base one. Yeah, so... <coughs> excuse me. Thank you. A trapezoid is the sum of the bases, so B1 plus B2 times the height and then divided by 2. And we're going to, on the next slide, we're going to show, I'm going to show you where that comes from. So the sum of the bases times the height divided by 2. For your picture, the bases are the ones that are parallel to each other for the trapezoid. So you get B1 and B2. It doesn't matter which one's 1 and 2 because they're just going to be added together anyway. And then your height, in this case, it always has to be perpendicular, so your height for this picture would be just the size. It doesn't have to be on the edge as long as it has to be perpendicular to the base. Okay? So that's for your trapezoid. The kite. It's hard to draw a kite, so if you want to write area of the kite. The area of the kite is half D1 times D2. What does D stand for? Diagonal. Diagonal. So the kite remember it looks like this. My diagonals are the dotted lines. So D1, for example, would be this distance here for the horizontal diagonal. And D2 would be this distance there. Remember that for a kite, the diagonals always intersect at what type of angle? Okay. A right angle. We learned that in the chapter 8 on quadrilateral. And we may use that in the future because you may, they may only give you certain pieces. You may have to use the tag and theorem to find certain things. Okay. Artie? So, the trapezoid, so the trapezoid, you find the height like you would like on the parallel. Yep, exactly. So, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, It's a really bad one, but if it's an isosceles trapezoid, the height can be anywhere. It just has to be perpendicular to both pieces. It does not have to be on that. Okay. The rhombus, the last one. The area of the rhombus. Is there a both, both the diagonals, length of the <coughs> diagonals. So D1 times D2, and then you divide it in half. And I'm going to show you where that comes from in a second. The area of the rhombus is actually exactly the same. It's half times the, the product of the diagonals. Half times the product of the diagonals. And a rhombus looks very similar to the kite.
Notice that for the rhombus, the diagonals are also perpendicular. And this would be D1, and this would be D2. Sorry, that's way too small. But you understand that helps me. So the diagonal, D1 and D2. So somebody please remind me to shut off the recording. I forgot to do it yesterday, and it like recorded 10 minutes. D1, D2 are the diagonals. So from the top left point to the bottom right point would be D1. D2 would be this point to this point. Right. Is that the you know, like, Plus one, three, And I'm going to give you a formula sheet, and I'll talk about it in a second. Oops, sorry. Do all right. Yep. Yep. So the next thing I want to do is talk about how to derive these area formulas. Where did they come from? Okay. Uh, yeah. You don't. We're not going to do a too common proof, but you should write this down, right? So the first thing we need to talk about is the trapezoid. This is a trapezoid. Is you okay with that? This is D1, D2, and let's say that I don't, you know what, let's make this a little trickier. Let's not make this right, because that's too easy. Let's make it like that. So my height will be right there. Are we okay with that? Okay. The area of the trapezoid where this comes from is we need to actually cut this trapezoid into two triangles. So we need to cut it in half. Well, it's not going to be exactly in half, but we need to cut it from one vertex to the opposite corner. So we're going to draw a line from this vertex to this opposite corner. Everybody see how it cuts into two triangles? We have the top triangle in the green, and we have the bottom triangle in the red. Everybody okay with that? Does everyone agree that the area of the trapezoid is equal to the area of the red triangle plus the area of the green triangle? Are we okay with that? So from here, we just need to do some algebra. Can you guys see the red on the screen? It doesn't really come up very well. Oh, uh, especially since it came up black. Whoops. That should be red. So the area of the red one first. The area of the red one. What's the formula for any triangle? Half the base times the height. Is that better? So the area of the triangle is half. What's the base for my red triangle? D2. So it's half the base. What's my height for the red triangle? Yeah, yeah everybody see the slot dotted line H? Can I slide it over here? Yeah. Is that going to be the height for the red triangle? Does this make sense? Yeah. So everybody sees that the height is going to be the same for the second for the red triangle. So I have half B2 times the height. We all right with that? For the green triangle, then, we do the same process. The area of the green triangle was half the base times the height. What's my base for the green one? What is it? What's my base for the green? D1. What's my height for the green? H. So notice that the heights are exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the base. So this is one half B one times H. Are we okay with that so far? Then the last thing we need to say is that the area of the trapezoid is equal to the sum of them. So we need to add them together. So the red one is one half B two H plus the green one, one half. 
B1H. Now from here we just need to simplify. What is common to both of those terms? The half and what else? The H. So let's pull out the one half H. What gets left inside the parentheses? We have B2 plus B1. Is it okay if I flip those around? So I'm going to say B1 plus B2. And then that's exactly what we wrote. We just wrote it a little differently. We just wrote H times B1 plus B2 over 2. Notice that this formula is exactly what we started with. Except it's backwards, but sum of the bases times the height divided by 2. Sum of the bases times the height divided by 2. So when we talked about theorems and why you can do these, remember a long time ago, postulates, theorems. We started from just a triangle and we were able to figure out the formula for a trapezoid. So people long, long ago, very, very smart people figured all this stuff out. Okay. Any questions on how I worked my way through that one? Uh, yeah, it might be an extra credit problem or something like that. The area of a kite, I'm not going to run through it all, so you don't need to worry about it all. Just pay attention real quick. If I draw any kite, and I cut it again, this is uh, my length D1. This is my length D2. Everybody see D2? If I cut it into two triangles, it's again. The red one up here and the green one down here. I'll do this one real quick. The area of my red triangle is one half the base. So what's the base of the red one? It's exactly D1. So it's one half the base times the height. Well, what's the height? Is the height all of D2? No. It's half of D2. So it's one half of D2. You guys don't have to write this one down. You don't have to. We can simplify that a little bit. Half times half, you multiply the numerator times the numerator. One times one is. Two times two is. So we get one fourth D1, D2. The area of the green triangle is one half. The base, what's the base for my green one? The B1. B1 times my height. Well, what's my height? Half of B2 again. Thank you. That's not going to work. Half D1 times half of B2. Simplify that a bit. Half times half. So I get one fourth D1 D2. Last thing is to put them together. So the area of the kite is equal to the red triangle, one fourth D1 D2, plus the green triangle, which is one fourth D1 D2. Notice that these have the same variables, D1 D2, D1 D2. Because they have the same variables, they're like terms, so we can add them. A fourth plus a fourth would give me two fourths. What is two fourths? A half. So the area of the kite is one half d1 d2. Okay. So once again, break it into small triangles and then do some algebra to put it together. When you get to college, you'll do a lot of math without numbers. So especially if, even when you get to physics which I encourage you all to take, it's not required, but it's a great class. When you get to physics, um, you'll learn how to solve things for variables instead of for numbers. Students, when they come in, don't like to solve just using various letters, right? They like to plug in numbers and try and set them all up. But when you get to higher level math, there'll be more and more with just letters. Okay? Um, 
really quickly. The areas are really easy. The perimeters are a bit more difficult. On the this one? Okay. What happens to the other two? Uh, what do you mean by the other? Uh, these were like terms. So it's like one fourth x plus one fourth x would be one half x. So just like uh, pretend we did two x plus two x. What was the answer of two x plus two x? One fourth d one d two plus one fourth d one d two. You add the um, coefficients in front, and then your variable just stays the same. Okay. So the area for this first one? What's my formula? One half the sum of the bases. What's my bases? Eight feet plus six feet times the height, which is four feet. So really quickly, what's eight plus six? Half of 14 is 7 times 4, 28 square feet, or feet squared. Um, the perimeter is a lot harder. What do I need to do to find the perimeter, Monica? Uh, can you explain that a little bit more? Okay, so we don't know this side? Uh, good. Altitude really only works for triangles, but that's fine. I know what you're talking about. So we know the whole thing here is eight. The top piece is six, so therefore this little small piece must be two feet. Good. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so 2 squared is 4 plus 16. 4 plus 16 is, so the last one would be the square root of 20. And then all you would need to do is you'd add up all the way around your trapezoid. Here would be a good place to use the decimal because you wouldn't be able to use 8 plus square root of 20. You're not allowed to combine. So you have to, you'd have to type in the decimal first. Okay. Second one. What's the area for the shape? What shape is it first? Rhombus. What's this air formula? Half foot. D1, D2. So the area is equal to half. What is D1? Doesn't matter which one you choose. Not 40 though. 80. Why is it 80? Yeah, because 40 is only half of it. It's got to be the entire line. So it's one half of 80 meters times 60 meters. Okay. So the area half of 80 is 40. So this would give you 200 and whoops, 240 meters squared. How can I find the perimeter of this? How can I find the perimeter of this? Naomi? Um, yes, and the tick marks indicate that. So we'd only need to find one, and then we could just multiply by four. The little triangles inside, they are pretty special, yeah. Why? It is a 3, 4, 5. So Jose says, notice that this 30 can be carried on in the interior. Everybody see the 30? Everybody see that the 40 can be carried on to the inside. What do we know about the diagonals of a rhombus? They're perpendicular. So this is 30, 40. One of our special triangles is what? 3, 4, 5. Well, if this is a 30, 40, what's the last one going to be? 50. So what's the whole thing? It's 50 times 4. 
Two hundred. What's the unit? Meters. Just meters. Remember, we measure distance in just a unit. We measure area in units squared. Samantha. On the If it doesn't have units, you're allowed to leave it blank. I would I would prefer that. On your test, I probably wouldn't take off that. Okay. If it has units, you absolutely have to include them. If it doesn't, I'd like you to write units, unit squared, etc. But I wouldn't probably take off that. I want to read it. Nancy or uh, Sarah? One diagonal of a kite is three times longer than the other diagonal. The area of the kite is 15 and a half square meters. Find the measure of both sides. Okay. Thoughts? Ma'am? Mm -hmm. Draw a kite. So if one's three times longer than the other, what's... So D1 will be the short one, we'll call it X. What would D2 be? 3X. Next step? Next step? So 13.5 square meters. One half. X times 3X. Because remember, um, remember it's D1 times D2. So we plugged them in. How should I solve this? Multiply both sides by 2 would be brilliant. So the half is going to cancel with the times 2. 13.5 times 2. So I get 27 meters squared equals, what do I do here? Um, here we're not combining like terms, that's for add and subtract. Here we're multiplying. 3x squared. Three squared, very good. Next step. Divide by 3 first. You can't take the square root yet, you need to get it by itself. So I get 9 meters squared equals x squared. Last step, square root, so x equals three meters. Now, it said to find the measure of both. So your D1 would be what? Three meters. What would D2 be? Nine meters. Okay. Very good. Just set up your uh, relationship using x, 3x, and then plug it in. Plug and chug. Right. Make sure that you answer the question asked. Um, Find the areas of rhombus with the following vertices. I want to skip it. We did one of these yesterday. You guys were great with that, right? Yeah. What would I do? Graph it and then. Oh, you know what? We shouldn't skip this one. No, we shouldn't. Because I'll show you why. Yes, did you pass out some, some uh, graph paper for me? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Which part? Uh, you know what? Let's, so when you graph these points, go ahead and graph, please. Uh, so the reason we did that is to show you um, where the point of the point is. No, not that. It's like the point of the point.
So we know that one diagonal has to be three times as big as this one you'll find the rhombus. Hopefully yours is a lot neater than mine. Which pieces do I care about for the rhombus? The diagonals. So I want to find MP and NQ. MP and Q. What is MP? Uh, we can call it diagonal one. How long is it though? Eight. Eight? So it's eight units. How did you figure that out? Count across. Because it's perfectly horizontal. If it were vertical, you could also count across. If it is diagonal, what would I have to use? Distance formula. Okay. Yes, ma'am? Possibly. That's a fair game. Yep. The formula again. Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right, you should have that memorized. How long is MQ? Four units. Get that by counting. So the area of my, uh, is it a rhombus? Yep, the area of my rhombus is equal to one half times the diagonals. Well, the diagonals are eight and four. So it's eight units times four units. No, not that I know of. Half of eight is four times four. Sixteen square units or unit squared. Sorry. If you want it unit squared. Or Joe here. Units squared. Okay. Now you can watch on YouTube and see yourself. Um, so yeah, the question was asked, would I give you a problem where you have to use the distance formula? That would absolutely be fair game. Okay. Uh, probably I wouldn't make you do both of them. Probably one of them would be simple, so you'd have to count it, and probably with the other one would have to use the distance formula. But using the distance formula twice wouldn't be. It would be. It would be perhaps annoying. Perhaps it would be um, enlightening. Perhaps it would strengthen your skills. Perhaps it would be motivating. Perhaps you would feel a great satisfaction when you completed it. I mean, these are all just, I'm just throwing these out. So this is from us. Uh, let's say my diagonal. So what if I had to find the diagonal on an on a angle? So instead of counting, we now would have to use the distance formula to find it. So you'd have to find the diagonal. So you have to find this this diagonal, and you would have to find that diagonal. Yes, in this case. I could line these up directly on top of each other, so you could just count those. 
Uh, can I work with you right after class? Because it's from when you when you were in class. Is that okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, another one. Here we go. The area of the kite is 100 square yards. It's a big kite. All right. Do you guys ever go to the kite festival? No, no. All right. All right. The area of the kite. There's a guy. So I went down to the kite festival on the ball. They hold it around the cherry blossom festival every year. Anybody gone to the cherry blossom festival? Yeah. 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 So at the kite festival, they've got all these giant kites flying around. And they had like a scuba steve kite. Like it was like 100 feet tall, like like <laughs> flying around. It was really cool looking. Alright. So the area of the kite is 100 square yards. Find X. Always start with the formula, Kimberly. D1, D2. So the area, what do I plug in? 100 square feet, square yards. Equals. Kimberly, go ahead and finish it. Uh, half. Half? What's D1? Ten? Doesn't really matter. Ten yards times X. You're here, Monica. Now you're, now you're, now you're on the YouTube again. Your time's not so good. All right. So we simplify a little bit. 100 yards squared. Half of 10 is five. Divide by five, we get x equals 20 yards. All right. X equals 20 yards. And looking at your picture, does that seem appropriate? That it's twice as long as the other one? Okay. Uh, we're going to skip that one. That's easy, too easy. How about this one? Last drop. So, take a look at it. We, I said we need to break it up into smaller pieces. What would be good uh, pieces to break this up into? Can we? There's a rhombus and there's not, it's not a kite though. A parallelogram. So we have the rhombus right here. Where'd it go? We've got the rhombus right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. All right. We got the rhombus right here. So we have we have the rhombus. Be careful where you walk, okay? We have the rhombus, and then we have the parallelogram. I once had a teacher in high school, and he was um, a little portly, a little rotund, right? He had a big, big belly. And he, he came into class, he was sitting by the filing cabinet, and he hit the filing cabinet with his belly. And all the stuff on top. <laughs> and all of us in class are like, <laughs> we, didn't know, we didn't know if we could laugh or not. Like, we didn't know if he was going to like let us laugh. It's, you know, kind of his big belly. <laughs> and so he just sits there and knocks. He looks at the stuff on the floor and goes, uh, <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, sometimes I forget how big I am. <laughs> and then we lost it. So it was okay. <laughs> but you guys can laugh, it's fine, all right? <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not very large. I can't make fun of my belly. Um, find the area of the shaded region. So we need to do uh, both parts. So the area of the shaded is equal to the area of the, uh, what's this called again? No, the whole thing, the whole shape. The area of the rhombus plus the area of the parallelogram. Right. So the area of the rhombus plus the area of the parallelogram. So the area of the shaded region is the area of the rhombus. What's the formula for the rhombus? 
Half. B1. B1 times B2. Plus, what's the area for the parallelogram? Half the base times the height. Well, we're kind of in a conundrum. Right? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Now, the issue, the issue here is that we have, notice, like, look at the rhombus. We have these congruent uh, sides, right, or the segments. If this is 4, then this one also must be, and this one must be, so this line here must be 8. So we know that for the rhombus, one of the leg or one of the um, diagonals has to be eight. The question though is we don't know what the other diagonal has to be. What if you five? It's not gonna be five. Sarah? Yeah, so if you look at it, if you look at this little triangle here, go back to the small triangle. This is four. This is 5, so what's the last one have to be? So what's the whole diagonal? 6. So this is going to be 6. So I get half, 8 times 6, plus, what's the base from my parallelogram? Why not 5? Why not 5? Go ahead, Micah. But why not? Why is the base 4 instead of 5? I agree with you. I just want to know why. Yes, ma'am. Um, for the small triangle, yes, but we're looking at the parallelogram, this part over here. The parallelograms don't really have a hypotenuse. Uh, it doesn't matter. It could have been the larger side. It just doesn't happen to be here. Monica? Correct. Remember, the base and the height have to be perpendicular. If you look at my picture, here's 4. Notice that the height has to be perpendicular to it. Is the height going to be perpendicular to this 5? No. no. So the base here is going to be 4. The height will be 3. And then we simply need to add them all together. So the area total, half times 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. <coughs> Plus 4 times 3 is 12. So the area is equal to 36 inches, or units squared, sorry. Units squared. Okay? And that's the end of our little section. Your homework for tonight? It's right here? Yeah, hang on, let me go back really quickly and then we'll, I'll go back. So I'm going to pass out a sheet right now. I'm going to pass out a sheet. Um, and I want to talk about the ACT really quickly. So write down your homework while I'm passing it out. We also need to take a um, quiz. It's up to you guys when you want to have it. We can have a little vote. Yeah. I'll stop the recording first. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to record this in the same time.